back on the Boss Man Show, talking about Patriots League basketball with Lafayette Leopards coach Mike McGarvey here with me. Mike, what's up, man? How are things up there in Easton? Everything is great, JR. Thanks for having me on. Uh, appreciate being here with you this morning. Anytime, man. So uh, how's it feel, man? You you previously were head coaching in your past life, man. So now you're back in the saddle again, man. So how's it feel to get, get back to running your own program again? Oh, it's great. I mean, you know, having the opportunity to be a head coach in the past, I think has prepared me well for taking over last spring and then, you know, transition into this year and, and thinking about the future. It's uh, it's been a fun journey. And, um, you know, we have a great team returning. We have great staff returning. So I'm excited to get started. And, and you know, I saw you guys make man made a run to the championship game last year. You know, you played Colgate, Matt Langley. You know, he's always tough to, to beat those guys up there, man. But just knowing what you all went through, unfortunately, what happened tra transitioning from from Mike the other Mike to you now. So just seeing you guys pers persevere and, and push through that, man. How was happy with you to see what, what your guys did? Maybe made, made, made that that late push. Yeah, it was great for them. You know, uh, there was a big change in their world, obviously, and, and all of us were going through that. And to see them have the success on the court and um, become closer in the locker room, you know, as a coach, that's what you want for the players that you have a chance to mentor and, and be around. So seeing their success and seeing all the hard work that they put in all season long come to fruition, have a chance to play in a championship game. You know, we talked about that often throughout that journey is that when you're in March Madness and you're playing in conference tournament week, like, you know, when you get to that championship game, you've got not only your conference, uh, the the other eight teams that haven't been able there watching you and wanting to be in your shoes, but you know, think about all of Division One. Um, you know, having that opportunity to play in March Madness is what really kept us together through that run. It was really exciting. Yeah, I'll tell you a quick story. Tennessee State, where I went to school at, man, we was in. It was weird because we knew our coach was getting fired if he did. We didn't win. We, we didn't win. Hmm. We played in the OBC is four days and four days. You like. If you like lower C, like we were four and four, so we was up by twelve, man. <laughs> we we tried, to, we literally tried to win the game. We ran out of gas, but my guy LT, a big guy, right? Why are you going to deny on a, up 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 on with two seconds to go? We ain't, we ain't do this, Mike. But I said LT, why are you going trying to deny deny? You got back cut and we lost by one point. We oh, lost no. for big day. <laughs> oh, but so that cost Coach Sy's job. We all did go through big days and forever. We like, man, the back cut, man. What were you thinking? Why yep. were you up here denying yep. it all hard? That and what, what were you thinking? Oh, you, you got beat back door fool. <laughs> Now, now, maybe fortunately and unfortunately, our championship game, we weren't in that close of a game, right? So the yeah. unfortunate part is that we weren't in that close of a game. The fortunate part is that we weren't in that close of a game. But it was, uh, you know, I think you know, just having the opportunity to do that and having the experience in it um, has prepared our returners well. And the, the incoming class is now looking at that as the opportunity that's in front of us. Um, so, you know, becoming more comfortable in those moments and on that stage, you know, should hopefully prove, you know, provide us, a, a, you know, the opportunity to go ahead and, and know what it takes to win that game when we get back there, hopefully. Um, so that's that's the motivation that we have here in the offseason. That's what we're looking forward to. Yeah, Mark Bay is so fun, though. I'll tell you, even though, even though it sucked for me, it was still fun to be <laughs> playing for in four days. So we, which time we see you, man, we all said the back. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> we were he will ever live that down in his life. He oh, no. That no that, that's, that's definitely a lifetime story. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, I mean, that was, I, I, you probably know this, but my dad was a coach too here in Atlanta, man. He's 84 years old. He'll be 84 in, in August, actually. Still, he had his legal pads out, still watches games the way that way he does, still talks to his old players. So, for you, my dad all told me about he wanted to help young men grow and help their games grow. So, what was calling you like, yo, why? It's going to get into the coaching profession and, and being, do what you do right now. Yeah, no, I recognize I'm on the younger side of coaching, but I'm entering my 17th year in college basketball coaching, which is kind of wild to think about. Um, and, you know, everybody had the dream of being a player. So I, I had that dream, too. I had a pretty successful college basketball career, albeit Division III. Um, but in my mind, I wanted to continue to be a player post-graduation and um, didn't get those opportunities as a professional player and had the opportunity to step in as a young coach at 22 years old. So, um, you know, for me, that journey of being a young coach and being around the game and being able to help young players has always been what's what's driven me to, to continue in the profession. Um, and you see the many successes on a day-to-day -day basis as a coach. It's not necessarily the championships that you win. Um, it's not necessarily the 40-point game that somebody might have. Um, that keeps you motivated to do it. You see the little things, uh, the daily maturity, 
um, the academic success, the professional success, the relationship success that your players have. Um, and the longer you do it, you find that more and more rewarding. So, you know, it's a blessing to be in this profession. You know, it's uh, it's something that I, that I, I don't take for granted at, at you know, and at any step of my journey. Um, I know there's a lot of people that would love to be college coaching. Um, oh, yes. Uh, and I can't think of a better way to uh, to earn a living for our family than to be around these this group of guys and coaching staff and being athletics. It's it's really a wonderful thing. No doubt, Mike. If like for you, man, what's the pillars of your program is that like you want the program to be known for and, and what values you want your players to have who come play for you uh, up there in Lafayette and represent the, the Leopards the, 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 the right way? Yeah, for sure. I, I think connectivity is something that we really try to preach, you know, having a culture where everybody is getting along and they're they're motivated by the same goal um, and trying to achieve daily success and put ourselves in position to be successful on and off the court. I think when that happens, you can see teams really uh, believe in themselves and and the wins come when that's when that's set. Um, so that's kind of what we are going to recruit towards. We're going to try to build a family like atmosphere every single day. Uh, a lot of positivity, a lot of energy, um, and, and just be, you know, uh, be a team that's really hard to defeat. You know, we're not going to beat ourselves. We're going to be uh, a team that makes smart decisions, that takes advantage of of what opportunities we have in the games. Um, and then hopefully the success will come down the road where everybody will want to be a part of it. Um, we've seen that in our league with Bucknell in the past, with, you know, Colgate recently, and, you know, hopefully we can be that next group. And speaking of your, of your league, Mike, it's so tough, man. And I say, I know Matt Langle's been pretty much running the league for the last few years, but <laughs> I just talked about talked about him how tough to, it is in that league and how talented guys really are in, in, in the Patriot League. But if, like you, you all don't get the the, the do that you deserve, how good the basketball is. But I really be, be sure to really watch what you guys do up there. It's really fun to watch. Very, very skilled for what, what you all do up there. Yeah, for sure. You know, to talk about the league a little bit, you know, obviously there's two uh, highly academic uh, conferences in Division One, and um, we have scholarships that Ivy League doesn't. And, you know, that's kind of what separates us nationally and, and internationally when people think about Patriot League basketball or Ivy League basketball relative to Division One basketball. Um, so that part is pretty cool. We get a chance to coach really uh, smart student athletes that that have an opportunity to play at the biggest stage. Um, but when it comes to the competitiveness of the Patriot League, it's a very well coached league. It has been for years. Um, there's skill basically at every single position, um, you know, and it's hard to win. I, I think it's hard to win across across the board in all sports and all of athletics. Um, but specifically to ba Patriot League basketball, night in and night out, whether you're at home or on the road, you know that you're going to be in for a journey because the teams are going to be very well prepared, very skilled, and hard to beat. 100%. And let me ask you this, Mike. How has the transfer portal helped you all get guys who you usually would not even get, be able to present them what you all are about and give you the opportunity to come up there and play? Because I feel like it it, it has its downside too, but also helps the, the mid majors too, where you go off and reach out to guys and maybe sell them on something different. Because if you, if you go to Power Five or Five, you might not even play. Pay, 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 come up to you guys, make it actually play and get you a contract over in Europe and have success up, up for the future. Because that, because I always tell young men, out of the sky does not lie. Put out good tape, people will find you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been really beneficial. Um, we've had a couple starters that have come from higher programs in the last year. Um, we've got another player coming in next year from the transfer portal as well. And, I, you know, I think one of the advantages for transfers coming into a school like Lafayette um, is that, there, yes, there's an opportunity on the basketball side of things that they might not have had at the ACC level or at the West Coast Conference level, what be, so be it. Um, but there's also an opportunity academically to, you know, once the basketball career is over, to have an opportunity in whatever field of, of occupation you want to want to go to, um, to have a career that's going to be life lasting and have this network and this alumni base that is going to take care of you for a long time. So um, to me, I think it's a great opportunity to recruit really talented players that we might not have been able to get out of high school that are coming to us for the right things. And that's the balance between that opportunity in basketball, but also that opportunity in academics as well. How's workouts been going from the spring and through the summer here? Because I feel like when I played, man, there's some times where you got better. The play, 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 play development piece was the main, main thing. And having that come out with your guys, those gas you run, those stairs you run, those workouts you have, the strength coach, that builds that camaraderie right there in the summertime. And it pays itself off in February and March when it really counts. Talk about the spring and the summer for you guys and what you all have planned for the rest of the time here. Yeah, you know, you're right about that. So we spend all year long trying to be the best version of our team that we can be. And then you get the spring and the summer and even into a little bit of the fall where you can improve as an individual. 
Um, so the springtime, that was really individual based, um, trying to help our guys get better um, in all facets of the game and and have them take ownership and what they wanted to work on, which was a lot of fun. Um, and now as the summertime comes, we've got our group coming in um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got a handful of players back this week that are training. Um, so it's a little bit more relaxed than the season would be. Um, but at the same time, we're starting to build on those foundations and try to get that culture right um, in the summertime. So we've got yeah, you know, this time of year is really cool because, you know, there's not a whole lot of academic stress on our players at Lafayette. Um, so it becomes more of like, a, how do you prepare like a professional basketball player? Uh, it's fun for our staff. It's fun for the players. And and hopefully we're all getting better in the journey. No doubt. I got two more for you, Mike. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you about scheduling. I know that's the second toughest part of your job is scheduling. <laughs> how has that been trying to get games, man, get come play you guys or having to get ball. So how has that been trying to get these games together, man? Yeah, it's always a challenge. You know, um, uh, we have we have some contracts that are going to carry over into next year. So a lot of our home and homes were set. Um, the opportunities to play at the highest level is always exciting for not only our fan base and our school, um, but also for the players and uh, for them to get a chance to go out and play against UCLA, uh, which we will do next year is, is really exciting. Um, being in the Philadelphia market, we've got a bunch of schools in the big five that we can tap into, which is always a great thing. Um, and then uh, trying to find the balance of, you know, preparing yourselves for what the Patriot League season will be. So the way we look at it is we've got the non-conference, that's kind of one season. Then we've got the Patriot League regular season play, that's another one. And then the postseason is the third season in our year. Um, so that non-conference uh, scheduling, although it's tough, it hopefully is preparing us for a really good run in the Patriot League. 100% of them, folks. Mike has a connection to one of our favorites here in Atlanta. In my research, <laughs> I did. I did research, research, research about it from, from this interview. Uh, he he knows our, our good friend, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, very well. So talk about it. Connection to Matt Ryan. He's a great guy. In the news, you see him in the games all the time. He used to work. I told you off there, I used to be around the Falcons a lot as well doing that during that curve. Talk about your connection to Matt Ryan, man, and, and how long you've known him and, and your family known, known each other. Yeah, it's been a really long time now as I think about how I've, I've become. Um, I went to high school with Matt. Um, he was a year behind me, so we played basketball together for three years in high school, football for three years. He was my quarterback, which was fun. I was a wide receiver. Um, and then we played a year of baseball together. So following his journey and, and being a fan of his and watching him uh, become one of the best you know, quarterbacks to play the game and have all the records that he broke while, while he was in Atlanta as a Falcon, it was really fun for my family um, and, uh, and especially for me knowing him on a personal level. Um, so I'm not sure what's next in his career. I saw that he's going to do uh, some TV stuff, but uh, I think Atlanta is a special place in his heart and, and hopefully Atlanta uh, views him the same way. We do. We do. We love Matt Ryan. You know, I've never been, I've been a Matty Ice guy. Uh, Matt, Matt Ryan really put his heart and soul into the Falcons. He really did. And mm -hmm. I'll tell anybody who will listen, if they never went after Deshaun Watson, he still would have been a Falcon. <laughs> but did it. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Deshaun Watson made him say, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't because he didn't want to be here. Trust me. It's like, yep. man, well, you want to, okay. He's all right. It's a, but nah, I love Matt Ryan. I'm happy for him. I, I think the Buccaneers should maybe sign him. You have Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. <laughs> Matt Ryan's better. Or the Raiders with Gar Garoppolo's foot. I see an opportunity. Maybe the, for the Raiders or the Cardinals could use him to cut to, to Murray gets back. The ACL. So I to <laughs> I options for Matt Ryan if the team would call it. I see some good spots for him, maybe, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, no, and look, he, he'd be an asset to any any uh, franchise that wants him to to be their quarterback. So I, that's my guy. I think he's uh, he's got some football left in him, of course, but, um, you know, he's a family man. He's got some other opportunities, so I, I just wish him the best in whatever he chooses to do. 100%. Well, Mike, thank you for your time today, buddy. We're going to get real soon, man. Enjoyed our chat today, man. Likewise. Thanks for having me on. Anytime. All right. Talk soon.